And thanks for joining us tonight for our presentation of college basketball. Our game tonight featuring the UCLA Bruins as they go up against the Florida Gators. I'm Forrest Hunt. Joining me are Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. And guys, does watching these games take you back to your college days? Absolutely it does. You instantly get caught back up in all the excitement. And it also doesn't hurt when those memories are taking you back to a championship season. Yeah, you know, it does bring up some great memories. And it's always fascinating to see how much has changed and how much really has stayed the same status quo with these schools. Now here's Palmer. Bayless outside. Diaz outside. Pass to Bayless. Mercer. Lock at six. Here's Palmer. Sheldon grabs the miss. You know, one thing you can really count on is the Gators are going to be tough now. I mean, this program is so consistent at putting together a tough team year to year. Despite being in a tough conference, they'll usually make the tournament and have a solid record. Bayless, right side, out to Diaz, and misses it off the right side of the rim. Junior with it, guarded now by Palmer, and that one drops. Well, it's obvious that Junior is a tough kid. I mean, he sticks with the play even through the contact there. They're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. Here's Diaz, Sheldon with a block. Three misses to start the game, still trying to break the seal on that hoop. Down it goes, his third basket in as many tries. It's impressive how Junior's inside play has continued to improve. He's now able to outperform many of his peers in the paint. Palmer, and they're going to count the bucket and send him to the line. It could be a three-point play. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. Junior with it. He's got six. A baseline J. He's off on that one. And Florida now the other way. You guys, many are wondering if Junior is stepping into a leadership role with this team. The fans feel he's a key star to this program's success this season, and he should be a leader. Tell you what, there are a lot of upperclassmen who can lead the way on this team, and yet you can't argue that Junior has the talent that warrants a leadership role, even though he's only a freshman. Junior inside, defended by Palmer. And lots of contact there, missing the shot, and he'll shoot too. It's going to go on Palmer. Boy, Junior does a nice job with the pump fakes. Really hard to predict when he's going to get that defender off balance. And good on the second, so he makes both. The Gators trailing. Diaz outside. Back to Palmer. Good D by Junior. And it's the Bruins ball. And it's going to be two free throws, drawing the contact on the shot. It goes on Lawson. On the drive, Junior's athleticism puts the defense off balance. They get sloppy, and he nabs a foul while getting the shot off. And it's the Gators with the ball. Good in the triple. Maybe he's not one of the elite sharpshooters, but even still, that's not a shot that D can afford to give him. And, you know, Junior, the son of the legendary Duke. You know, Duke was a standout from Newark in his own right. But unfortunately and sadly, he passed just before Junior started playing organized basketball. And you have to wonder if that's what spurred Junior to take up the family sport. Junior has probably heard all about the greatness of Duke his whole life. Now it's time for him to write his own name in Newark lore. Back to Junior. No good. Good work defensively by Fields. Here's Florida. Outside Palmer. Bayless with it. Junior's there. Bell outside. Junior defended by Bayless. Here's Junior. 
second shot opportunity. And that's two points on the layup. Nice job creating for the easy deuce. And here are the Gators now, trailing by two. And here's Bautista. It's good, and he makes his first shot of the game. That's a precision shot. You've got to be precise. No room for error on the floater. The timeout called here. The Bruins will talk it over. Adjustments are a part of the game, and the coach sees something he doesn't like here. And you in one of the legendary recruiting classes for the Gators, that 2004 class. The starting five and sixth men all went on to play pro ball. They call themselves the O4s for the year they all enrolled. Palmer, covered by Junior. Back to Diaz. Pass to Lawson. Shot clock at six. No luck on that one. Yeah, just a solid job on the backboard. They are really controlling the inside. Well, they're working the glass, really battling in that area of the game, and that's helped them stake this lead. Back to Junior. It's good, and with that basket, he's now five for nine. And the talent level for the O4s, simply unreal. Multiple Gators going on to have great pro careers. You know, it was led by Al Horford, Joe Kim Noah, and Corey Brewer. Easily one of the best recruiting classes ever in college basketball, in my opinion. Very few colleges have ever seen a class that talented. And here are the Gators now. 11-point game. Pass to Diaz. Lawson with it. Now here's Mercer. He's covered by Jones. Mercer outside. Back to Lawson. Red Thompson with the rebound. The Florida Gators have long been a football powerhouse. They were a football school. It wasn't until about 20 years ago that they really became a basketball program, and the basketball program could say the same thing. And now both programs are some of the most respected in the country. The school's large enough to be fanatical about both sports. With the athletic talent in Florida, both programs always have some great athletes coming in. Diaz outside. And that comes off the assist by Palmer. And the Gators get Diaz so well set up there. His positioning, the timing of the pass, you can tell they are totally in sync. And we've reached halftime in this one. And the first half of play in the books, you look at the game Junior's having, talk about his numbers. He's scoring with real efficiency, making it look pretty easy offensively. Great shot selection and an instinct for scoring the ball. His talent level is obvious, and he's having his way. Back to Palmer. And, and they continue to control the glass. Guys, I think they've simply been the more physical team, and that's why they're ahead. And Junior gets it to go. Another bucket in the paint. That's something they just have not been able to stop today. Yeah, the defense is all about disrupting timing and spacing, and, and what they've got going right now is not getting it done. Well, you know, the stretch for the Gators in their history is easy to pick. I mean, the school won back-to-back -back titles in 06 and 07. That was clearly a dominant error for the program. Makes it off the glass. Those defenders look like they're out of gas. I mean, they're getting pushed around on the low block. Yeah, but they better rally soon because they've given up three straight buckets in the paint. Pass to Bayless. Back to Diaz. The Bruins pull it in. Talking about those 06 and 07 titles for Florida, those were the first two championships for the school, guys. The Gators had been to the finals before, but hadn't come away with a win. 
Very rare to see a school win twice in a row like that. Those teams established the school as a fast. Junior outside. Pulls up from 15. That one off the back iron and out. Here's the fast break. Here's Bayless. That one is off. Now UCLA takes it the other way. On up the court. Here's Junior. That's down the hatch. Notch one more to his total. That's nine for 15 shooting. And what you got to appreciate about Junior, he never lets his foot off the pedal. Just a machine out there. Diaz outside. Back to Bayless. Pass to Diaz. Mercer. Here's Lawson. Guarded by McGee. Fades back. Lawson misses. In college basketball, rankings are everything. Do you guys have a preference between a scrappy underdog or a dominant top seed? I got to go with that powerhouse top seed team. There's a reason those teams earn that ranking through the course of the regular season. I love the unpredictability of these games. Always fun to see an underdog team defy expectations and grab the W. Inside, Bautista covered by Junior. Diaz outside. Off the mark, and the drought continues. Not only is their lead big, but their advantage on the boards is huge, too. They've been the aggressors, plain and simple, outworking them, fighting for every loose ball. Boy, the fast break has really been good to them here, and they're clicking in transition. Yeah, three of their last five scores have come from fast break opportunities. They have made the most of their chances. Timeout called. The Gators. Well, it's been an express lane to the rim. Coach can't be happy about that. And, you know, I think he's going to tell them simply, we have to show more fight on the interior. That's the top priority right now. And that one good for two. Boy, I tell you what, what a well-designed play. Executed beautifully, too. Pass the buckets. Second chance shot, and he lays it straight in. One thing that makes these games extra special to me is that we could be seeing parts of the future NBA championship team out there. You know, if only you could pick them out, right? Forecast the future a bit. I agree. That question in the back of your mind, is this a future MVP? Adds another layer of interest. It's tough to think about how many of these players have that dream for themselves, knowing only the very best are going to take that next step and join the league. Here's Junior, and he gets it to go. Their interior defense has been dismal. Yeah, they're losing the battle in the paint. Now here's Blunt. And fouled hard that time, and he'll get two shots at the line. And the free throw, no good. And the Bruins making a change here. And he's good on the second. So it's UCLA now. Junior high post. Basket's good. Well, I tell you what, his football background early in high school, he played on the gridiron. So Junior is no stranger to initiating and embracing contact. Pass to Snow. Now Blunt. Collins outside. Puts up a three. They get it again. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact and he'll shoot two. With the best college players often leaving without playing the full four years, it's always interesting how much teams change year to year. Hey, college stars are like shooting stars. Blink and you'll miss them. It's definitely one of the most interesting challenges of the college game for coaches. Absolutely. I mean, coaches have to constantly adapt to new rosters. They're more focused on getting the best pieces to fit their strategy rather than recruiting guys to build a strategy around. Here's Collins. 
another shot. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two here. It's going to be on Peterson. Second free throw, no good. Not nearly as productive a trip to the line as he'd have liked. They need all their free throws to go down at this point. Junior drives in, banked in off the glass. Boy, Junior takes a lot of pride in slashing inside and finishing. He's showing you right there how dangerous he can be in that kind of situation. Here's Waters. Pass to Sharp. And the dunk to finish it off. What a beauty. This guy is a hot flyer. I mean, especially for a power forward, and he needs to be as an undersized player. A contributor to any team's success is the chemistry on the floor between the players. Do you guys think the brevity of college careers makes it harder to build those bonds? I don't think so. No, these players are studying together, practicing together, living together. You instantly form strong connections in those situations. Hey, I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, a lot of these guys are making friendships that are going to last a lifetime with their teammates. Just one more way in which these college seasons are where players are really forged on and off the floor. Now Junior, pass to Sheldon, good, and the assist goes to Junior. You can tell Junior has been building his offensive arsenal. Here he selects the right pass at the right time to pick up an assist. Here's Snow, Sheldon with a block. Here's Martin. Pass to Buckets. On the wing, Junior. To the paint. Sheldon misses. On the wing, Collins. Baseline, Jay on the way. And that's good for two. Junior with it. Off the mark. And so it's the Bruins taking care of business in this one. And without question, Junior was the driving force. He set the tone with his energy and effort, and his teammates followed en route to a blowout victory. And guys, I think we all caught a glimpse of just how special this young man can be. Games like this one will certainly catch the attention of NBA scouts. And for Greg Anthony and Clark Kellogg, I'm Forrest Hunt. Thanks.